I walked on stage and said, I'm fearful. If you want to know what being scared shitless and doing it anyway looks like, that's me. You literally said that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And it and I, I've learned the greatest piece of who we are is our vulnerability when it mm. comes to being able to stand on stage like that and mm. share. You know, for a parent, it's like, you know, when you yell at your kid and then you can go back and be like, I'm sorry. I was angry at that moment in time. When you can go back and be vulnerable with your kid, it's the vulnerability mm. is what is the genius it's mm -hmm. the open-heartedness that happens there it's mm -hmm. when you can bring all of you all of you to the moment and be present with what is instead of trying to like put on this mask you know to face the world mm -hmm. all right hey welcome back everybody to the show today's an honor i guess she's an icon <laughs> i think i would say she's an icon i'm gonna say that out at loud. 40 She's an icon. <laughs> she's iconic for sure. Thanks. And she's just um, she's a really special being. Um, she's an immensely gifted artist, and you all know who she is once, you, once I say her name. But I've just watched her. When I used to watch her when she was young, I thought she was this really young soul. And as I've watched her become a woman, I think she stepped into a space where she's actually like a very old soul. No, thank you. And very wise. She's gone through a lot. She's grown a lot. And she's just got a, she's got a new album out, by the way, that I absolutely love. I cried listening to a song on there called How Much a Heart Can Hold with my wife. And her new album is called God's Work. And I'm really honored that she's here today to share some time with all of you that I love so much. So, Leanne Rimes, thank Hi. you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so good, finally. I know. We met a bunch of years ago. Yes. And, like, I get Christmas cards and stuff from you. but well, like, like four it, years ago, I guess yeah, it was. I think was so. It? I yeah. Think so. I think it was. And then, you know, like, I've just become such a fan of you. Thanks. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Why Why the album now? What was the timing now? Um, You know, it really just kind of came through me. I'm, I'm one of those people. I love creation. I love creativity. And I'm constantly creating. And I'm constantly drawing from life and our life experiences. And the the whole album was truly informed by what we all went through together i think as a collective over the past three years mm -hmm. and still are going through i think it was timely and i out of every conversation i have or like a, it can be anything in life it can be a billboard i see like something will pop out at me and i'll write down all these different titles on my phone mm -hmm. and then i'll take all of those titles and i'll put them on a whiteboard yeah. and really? i'll start to like See, there's there's usually a through line somehow in some of the songs I know what I want them to be about. Some of them I don't. And God's Work was one of the titles. And it seems like everything I had to write about fell under that umbrella. I mean, everything falls under that umbrella. Right. So I was like, you know, that's an interesting title for a record because it can be so... It, it it can be so polarizing. Yeah, I was just thinking. Yeah, that. it can be incredibly yep. polarizing. And it even that word for me was incredibly polarizing for my whole life. I was raised Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. I like I, I ran as far away from it as possible. And it was really a reclamation of that word for myself. And I felt like I wanted to, throughout the record, you know, I really kind of look at the duality of life, the human and the holy of things, and mm -hmm. how that all plays into our worlds. And I wanted to give people the permission to reclaim that word for themselves. Mm. And so I feel like that's kind of what the album does. It's like it doesn't want to run away from our humanness. It includes all of it. Mm. And I want people to understand that, you know, our humanity can't be left out of our, our experience. It can't be left out of creation. Mm. And so it's a deep, it's a deep record. Mm. And it just kind of fell through me. It came through me and I was like, okay, I'm surrendering to this process. I love that. I had a, uh, it's so funny you say that because I was preparing. I'm like, do I want to go there right off the top with her? Like this <laughs> I'll whole go there God right off the top. <laughs> no, but to your point, like I actually think there's a consciousness shift in all different types of faiths regarding that. Mm -hmm. I had a pastor on my show named Erwin McManus. Do you know who Erwin is? I know him. Yeah. yeah He's I, amazing. Yeah. I thought that you would think that and yeah. I thought that you might know him. And he talks often about in his, his version of his Christian faith, is the genius of Jesus and that there's a genius in all of us. Mm -hmm. And so he very much connects our humanity to God and our experience here. It's not mm -hmm. absent of it. Mm -mm. And so exactly. I wondered, I was thinking about him and I was thinking about you when that happened. So let's just go there for, for a minute. Yeah. What does that word mean to you now? When I say God to you, what does that mean to you? Um, it does mean creation. It, it, um, it, I think you can insert the word love. Um, I think it is the essence of who we truly are when you remove all of the mental constructs and the, the, the societal programming, the parental programming, 
I think it's just the core essence of who we are. I think there is a genius in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like we've been told through religion and I, I think there's many beautiful things about religion sure. and there's many things that I've learned mm -hmm. um, through many different teachings. But I feel like when you, you know, we've been told that our humanity is sinful and it's, you know, unholy. And I think I know my own experience, like I've tried to run away from all those aspects of myself, all the aspects of my shadow. Mm -hmm. And it's not till I started to turn toward that and accept that and start to bring that into the wholeness of who I am. Did I, I feel actually get to experience, you know, what I believe is God. Well, if you really want to go really deep, let's do it. Sure. But this idea in some faith that, you know, there's the absence of humanity and faith removes sort of this idea of sin. If mm -hmm. there's sin, there means there's humans, there's humanity, there's frailties, there's struggles. There's yeah. a part of our life that oftentimes people in faith, I think, um, never face themselves. Yes. They, they never look inward. They're always looking outward. Yeah. And there's something profound about also looking inward. If we didn't need to look inward, there, was, there wouldn't be sin. There right. wouldn't be struggle. There yeah. wouldn't be the idea that I need something outside of myself if we don't look at ourselves. So yeah. I'm 100% I'm on the road with you well, here. Well, so I say it. sin is really missing the mark, you know, mm -hmm. which, I, which I love that uh, explanation of sin. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I feel like it's, for me, what I've kind of gathered from that statement. It's missing, missing the mark of that, that genius that we truly are, missing the mark of that essence of the core of who we are. Mm. Um, you know, I think there's, there's so much, like, you know, I've talked about anxiety and depression and so many different things mm. that we all struggle with in some way, shape, or form. And our, our genius, our, our core essence can get so clouded. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really finding the way back to that inner voice, I mean, I think that's what this record kind of points to is, you know, I feel like we're, until we're about six or seven years old, like we're so in touch with our inner world, our inner voice, our, our little inner genius, our play, oh my gosh. our innocence. And, you know, there's a song on the record called Innocent. And I really dig into, I started to dig into to it for myself of, you know, that thought of, that we're always told, um, you know, that we, there's a loss of innocence yes. somewhere along the line. Yeah. I mean, you go back to the apple and Adam yeah. and Eve, you yeah. know, so there's a loss of innocence. And I don't feel like I had this experience. I was going through, I was doing a lot of somatic work and I was mm -hmm. going through um, this one session and I had this like energy that felt like it was hanging outside of me and it dropped in. And when it dropped into my body, I felt this overwhelming amount of joy mm -hmm. and it lasted for about 48 hours. And I wrote that song Innocent in that time. Really and I was reading a lot about, um, uh, uh, child sex um, trafficking at the mm -hmm. time too and it was it just something clicked for me and especially my childhood too of, mm -hmm. you know it's like I didn't really have one, one. Um, and it's we've been told we lose our innocence and I'm like no it's there it's there it's still there we don't lose it mm -hmm. it just gets clouded and I feel like you know religion is one of those things that like you were saying always looking outside of you never mm -hmm. looking in and we 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 get these we get these things in our head of like loss of innocence that we're there's there's something wrong with us that mm -hmm. we're sinful yep. and they stick and it's amazing how much that drives your life and when mm -hmm. you have for me when I had that experience of what felt like my purity my innocence mm -hmm. that still was there it was mm -hmm. like oh this hasn't gone anywhere and I wanted I wanted everybody to know like yeah. <laughs> this is here yes um so, and I've, you know, I, I lose touch with that all the time. So I think I. that's the, that's the dance, right? So do I. Well, I, I just, I'm amazed, by the way, we're going there, aren't we, everybody? We're five <laughs> minutes in, but I, I want to say something to you. It's amazing how much, I want to unpack some things there. Mm. Our, our work on ourselves lines up you and I. It does. Because, yeah. Well, I'll tell you a couple of things. Okay. One, like all these years I've been, you know, helping with people, their lives and different aspects of personal development or business and stuff. And I've just, my work has just moved into this space that all creation, all great things come from love. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking about this, like my dad getting sober. Why did my dad finally get sober when he quit drinking? Because he loved his family so much from love. He wanted to try one more time. Mm -hmm. And this notion of childhood, I write in my book a lot about this thing, why are we happier when we're children? Mm. And this genius thing, I think it's somewhat connected to imagination. Mm -hmm. And so that when we're children, see, there's two ways to operate, I think, in life. One is out of history and memory, and the other one's out of imagination and dreams and genius and creativity. And at some point in most of our lives, 
years earlier than most. My I lost my childhood because I had to be the man of the house with an alcoholic right, death. Right. You lost yours, I think, because of your career, yeah. right? But when we're children, we're typically happier because we're, we, we don't have a history in memory. We're in our imagination. We're in our creativity. We're in our dreams. And at some point, we start to have a history and we start to operate out of that history and memory. Mm -hmm. And I think that suppresses our genius. It suppresses oh, yeah. our imagination. Well, and I've learned something I've learned about myself is I have a very vivid imagination. Sure. I was an only child. I played by myself. Like mm -hmm. I had, I talked to, you know, things that weren't there constantly. Me too. And when you start to have that history and that those traumas meld with a really intense imagination, like I make up so much <laughs> that's not there. And I've had to learn like, oh, that's, you know, I've had to learn to utilize my imagination for something better or mm. else if it, if it, it's like idle hands or devil's handiwork yes. kind of thing. It's like if I if it's just sitting there not doing anything productive and guiding it in the right direction, mm -hmm. it will just totally go over and take all my traumas and it'll make up all the things. It'll bring it all into the now. Yep. So I've had to really learn how to to direct that. And, you know, I think that's why music for me and writing is such an outlet because it's it allows me to to direct that wild imagination into something powerful i'm the same way i did it last night <laughs> no i did last night i woke up at like i don't know like 2 30 and i just started stacking anxieties oh, yeah. and worries and things i've got to do and stuff yeah. that's not going right and i'm stacking it and i i finally went you know you're doing it again yeah <laughs> i literally in the middle of my almost halfway asleep i go you're doing it again can you not at least sleep through this you know so it creeps back on me too do you so, oh god i understand <laughs> so deeply yeah i mean i i my sleep is not great mm -hmm. and um my aura ring like yells at me all the time my like, aura ring was oh yelling at god. me I, I posted it this morning yeah. here's my aura ring look how many times i'm up and this one's for an hour yeah where i'm just like you just dumbass ruminating. you're just doing it over and over That's half of it's not even true comes in. we're not gonna call ourselves a dumbass right, okay. we're gonna call it <laughs> <I> love myself <laughs> i love you it's okay no but it's so easy and then you get into that trap of doing exactly that going oh you're doing it again this is so stupid and mm -hmm. then you go into judgment and mm -hmm. then it's just like okay well now i'm judging myself and then it becomes this like circular thing for me what is good and i know you've had this too when I have an awareness over something, it kind of loses its power yes. over me. So rather yeah. than calling it, I'm kind of being funny. I'm like, yeah, you no. are doing it again, yeah. dude. And it's almost like, it's almost become, because I have done work on myself, which we'll talk about with you in a second. It almost does become like, come on, man. Like, you yeah, know no, you're doing it. Aren't you tired of doing this? Like, yeah, you're doing it again. it's a habit. It's I a mean, habit. It's history and memory. It, it is. And it's it, a memory. It's, it's the, the addiction of, you know, I've, I know I'm addicted to anxiety. Like, right. I, it's for me, I've... I have kind of two speeds. I have anxiety and I have, I, I go into freeze mode. Mm. And that was a protective mechanism for me. When mm. I needed rest and I couldn't say no as a kid, I went into freeze. And so my anxiety for performance has always been the mechanism that has driven me out of freeze in order to work. Mm. And so I've had these like two modes that still, it still happens all the mm. time. Really? But uh, my awareness of it, yes. like you're saying, the awareness of it, it's like, oh, this is what's happening. I don't have to beat myself up about it. Mm. It's just my nervous system doing what it's trained to do. Yep. And we can figure out a way out of this. Right. But it's the awareness of it is what's key. Our, our addiction to anxiety we share. I wonder if we'd be really good for each other when we point it out or if we would just <laughs> right. constantly like, pour it on it. Let's go do you it. You think you're worried. I'm really worried. We just, you know, like, exactly. I wonder if we would be good for one another because I do it too. I think we become addicted to the familiar. Mm -hmm. even if it doesn't serve us right we, oh, yeah. we love the familiar and i used to brag that man i am great under stress yeah. i would brag about it man you should see how great i am under yeah. stress and then what i would do is create stress so mm -hmm. that i thought i could be great i would create the mm -hmm. familiar and if i woke up one day i'm like so is this what i want to do the rest of my life is yeah. somehow be great under stress yeah. all the time Agreed. so i don't want i don't want to do that so let me ask you a question. when i hear you sing i don't mean to like float your boat but I don't know if you ever heard this before, but you're really good at it. Hey, <laughs> I was thinking about trying it, <laughs> maybe as a job. No but, talking, uh, no, but talking about God, I was like, why do I sometimes cry when I hear her sing? Oh, yeah. And I think it's like, maybe it's, there's the presence of God there. Um, yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. I how much of what so. you have is given to you? through a gift and how much of it is that you've worked at it? I think it's, uh, well, I, I think it, it, I came in with it. I mean, my dad has tapes of me singing at 18 months old, like wow. full on, like could carry a tune here, pitch. Like there's something, 
I did come in this world with it. Mm. Um, and then I definitely have worked at it. And I've worked at it more in the last couple of years. I, you know, I've been on the road my whole life. And with COVID, like, I didn't sing really for two years. Mm. I made the record, but that was like here and there. Mm. And I was constantly like in quote unquote practice, you know? Yeah. And so I've, I've actually worked at, retraining my muscle to like to build it back up so I can go work again uh, mm. on a consistent basis so this is the first time in my life that I've really had to ever work, work. at it um but yeah it's uh I mean you know the vocal cords are these tiny muscles and it's like anything else in the body like they can hold inflammation they can get tired like you know it's it's kind of crazy that the thing there is in my body yeah. and I you know I have to remember like everything else I do in my life affects that, that thing I yeah. would challenge everybody that they're going to go get your album, right? Go make sure that you go get God's work. And if you can get through that whole album without crying or getting <laughs> no. emotional, there's something wrong <laughs> yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, you need to go see you, a therapist. You literally immediately need to go see a therapist because it's <laughs> uh, that, it's it's uh, it's moving. Yeah, it's meant to be. I mean, that's the thing. I, I feel like part of my gift is, as I've gotten older, what I've realized is to help people feel. Um, and, and I know it's part of my gift to myself, too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, music was always an outlet to be able to express the things that were scary to express yeah and so i feel like that's when i make an album that's part of what i'm doing too is helping people express things and you know on this record we go into we go into grief and rage and mm -hmm. you know and loneliness love. and love and hope and like mm -hmm. we we run the gamut and um yeah i feel like there is something that kind of opens up when I sing and I connect to something else. Um, you must. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I think when I'm experiencing great art, even like a great speech, if I hear mm, someone give a speech, oh, yeah. but particularly like with your work, I find myself almost leaving the music from sometimes and like reflecting on my own life. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I leave what you're actually saying for a few minutes, but the way you're saying it, the energy that comes from it, mm -hmm. what I'm feeling causes me to think about things that seem not correlated, but are, yeah. and I can only explain that that's a spiritual experience Yeah. when that happens. Yeah. I just wanted you to know you do that Thank for me. Thank you. Thank you. So we said that if you like, don't cry when you listen to the album, you should probably go to therapy. <laughs> and I want to, I want to talk to you about that. Because I talk openly about like different struggles I've had with, you know, mental health or anxiety or worry. And I think it takes courage for anybody to do that. I think it takes extra courage when you're a public person like I am. And then I think it takes extra, extra <laughs> courage when you're a public person like you are. So I have to imagine, was it like a, la was there, was there a catalyst where you went? Because you actually went somewhere for a while and said, I just going to unplug. Yeah. Right. So I heard you say something like you felt like you were permanently plugged in all the time. Oh, I still do sometimes. Do you? Do you? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do. I feel like I, I have this electrical current that runs through my body, mm. um, which is maybe partly, I mean, if you want to look at the spiritual aspect of it, maybe it's partly like my connection with, with all that is um, that's mm. coming through me. Um, but I, I do feel like also with my nervous system and the way that I was on, I, f I say it's on, it's been on stun since I was a child. Yeah. I mean, just growing up in the household I grew up in, there was a lot of arguing and, you know, when you, when you're constantly in that hypervigilant mode mm -hmm. and then taking that already hypervigilant child and putting her into a world where all eyes are on her 24 seven, mm -hmm. um, my hypervigilance has been intense, but it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, at 30, I just decided I needed to go get help. I was on I was having horrible anxiety, insomnia, like depression, and I'd never been alone. There's always been someone with me. Mm. And when I went into um, this treatment center, like when the doors locked, like I remember going, oh my God, like I'm alone for the first time. Really? Yeah. And it was- Did they take your phone from you too? Um, I don't remember if they did, maybe for a moment, maybe for the first few days. Okay. Um, and what no one knows actually during this time, I was going through like all these dental surgeries. And while I was in there, I had five um, root canals. Oh, my God. Five at one time. Come on. And while I was <laughs> in oh treatment, my gosh. and they're looking at me, they first off, they thought I was like, sure. they thought I was wanting drugs at the beginning of it. They were like, oh, yeah, she's just doing this. And then they took me in to, had to have a root canal at midnight oh, one night. My, my dentist gosh. met me. He's like, yeah, we need to do five. I'm like, see? Oh, my gosh. I wasn't asking for drugs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it, it was just a moment in my life where everything 
was just falling apart. Mm -hmm. And in, I mean, it was the greatest gift Mm. to be honest. I mean, we can never see those at that moment in time, Mm. but, um, you know, and from that moment on, I think, you know, I just turned 40 and I, I feel like these last 10 years have been my own journey of kind of peeling back every layer and, and I still have so many layers to peel back. I love that like, part. you know, uh, yeah, it's, but I have more, I think now I, I, I have more of an understanding of the, all the little pieces that are how, you know, how they all fit into this puzzle of me. You think you know you better than I you? do. I know me very well sometimes so much you know that awareness piece where mm-hmm. you're like i'm aware of this but i can't do anything about it just yet yep. you know yes i do know yeah what i love about what you're saying is that i sometimes have conversations with friends of mine where like that one moment changed everything and oh, i yeah. was never that way again no. <laughs> and i've had a few things in my life like that but i find that most aren't mm-hmm. most are like i made progress there yeah, totally i made progress or i chipped away at something mm-hmm. there and i think that's a really important thing for you to share if you don't mind is that you still have these proclivities from oh, time yeah. to time right i think there are people like i've gotten better but i'm not all the way better and then is they, there an all the way better though? i don't That's, think there is i don't know if there is i don't I mean, think there is and i think we get you know a lot of this kind of self-help world can also be just another way to shame ourselves yes that's what i'm you saying know? and exactly. so for me i've really had to notice that also yeah it's like how am i using this self-help world to run away from mm-hmm. the core of everything and also you know, how am I using this to say in a shame cycle where I feel like I'm constantly trying to get better and get better and get better. And it's like, okay, when do I just exist? Allow? Just be. Ex- yeah. allow. I, I'm wow. I hope everyone's enjoying this as much as me because I'm right with you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I even shame myself like, who are you to be giving people all this advice? Oh, yeah. And you were up at 2.30 last the, night. I did the same thing this morning, by the way. I did knew you? I was coming and talk to you. I've had mm. a rough morning mm. and I was like, you know, you get this imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome like, or fraudulent. Yeah, you're completely fraudulent. Yeah, yeah. And I stopped myself and I was like, no, you're not. Mm. You've come a long way and yeah. you have a lot to share from the place that you are right now. Yes. And then, you know, I have a lot to to grow, but it's not, I think my, my growth is just, I, I think you get to a point where, for me at least, I want to be better for myself. Mm-hmm. It's not about anything outside of me yep. it's like i want to i want to treat myself kinder and i want to i want to live a happier more joyful life and it's for me and i think there's a big difference in that when that starts to shift um yeah, yeah it, it's it's, it's so a really true. big change it's so true for everyone listen to this there's too many times in my life where i'm making a change and i'm going now this is going to be a good lesson for everybody else <laughs> Yeah. It is helping me, yeah. but instead of just being in it and like, I'm just going to treat myself kinder right now. And if at some point what I'm going through would help some other people, I'll do it. But I think we also get into this thing of, cause we have good hearts. We want to help people all the time. Sometimes the most important thing you can do to help everybody else is to like care for you Yeah. to help Absolutely. yourself. Right. So you go away and you come back mm-hmm. and I'm just curious, like, does the anxiety manifest itself in any area like could even be like coming here today or yeah, yeah it like, does it does so <laughs> it you'll does. still you'll still and what does it look like for you like I don't really want to do this or I'm not good enough to do this or yeah. how do I get out of doing this or like oh no I mean I yeah I definitely well it could manifest in all those ways actually right. yeah me um, too that's yeah, why I ask I um I think it's definitely kind of c- comes back to this like worthy worthiness wound um wow it's amazing and, for I you. know it is pretty crazy if you think about it because of all that I've accomplished in my mm-hmm. life and and I but I do think that that's why I was so adamant about accomplishing so much because I felt like I had to in order to receive love me too and in and, and when you really boil it down especially for myself ultimately at the end of the day mm-hmm. and so now it's I, I feel like that's definitely quieted down a lot. And mm-hmm. I, like I said, I can stop myself this morning and be like, no, you're like, it's mm-hmm. all okay. Like you can have all the anxiety and all these feelings of unworthiness and you can still show up and you're still going to, for me, it's like, just, I just ask, like, you know, I trust that whatever needs to come through will come through me. And it is. And thanks. It and is. that's what, that's the thing. Like you just, for me, I've learned to kind of move that piece of me just to the side, not like mm. out of the way completely. Mm. Just move it to the side. Sit, tell it it can be there. Mm. Like you can have your space in me today. Like you can be right here. And I'm also with you. There's another part of me that's here too. Mm. Um, so it's a bit of compartmentalizing and at the same time allowing it to be complete. Like, mm. I, I, you know, for me in the past, like 
I used to never have stage fright, never have anxiety. Mm. Like when I was a kid, I was just, I felt superhuman. Did and you? until I, once I started to see my humanity, it changed everything. All of a sudden I had anxiety, all of a sudden I had stage fright at times. Like I realized. About when was that? My humanity. It started, I would say it started um, right, maybe around 28. Yeah, 27, 28. Mm. Um, me too. For me, it was when other people started to criticize me yes, a little bit. Yes, completely. I wonder, yeah. That's exactly when it happened. Mm -hmm. My husband and I have been married for 12 years, but we went through right. you know, a pub very public affair. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, the press is just brutal. And mm -hmm. especially for a woman and especially for a young woman who they built up to be America's sweetheart forever. Yeah. And so it was like the ultimate story for them. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started judging myself through other people's eyes. And sure. one day that did switch and like maybe 32 or 33, I realized, wait, these are people's projections onto me. Like mm -hmm. I don't have, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my mistakes, um, I'm not my mistakes and I'm not, I'm not who they say I am. And I think that it took me, it took me doing a lot of soul searching to recognize who I was mm. in order for that not to be projected upon me. It's very good. Yeah. Same and with me. Yeah. It's intense. It's yeah. an intense role. Yeah. And by the way, this manifests, this projection from other people manifests in your life listening to this, maybe the same way it does for Leanne and I, Leanne and I, but maybe differently. Maybe you're living someone's projection in your life. Yeah. Your parents projected a particular career on you. Totally. Or beliefs in yourself or what you are or are not good at. Mm -hmm. They projected that onto you and you've adapted it and that's how you live your life. Yep. And so a lot of our lives, there's this whole thing, are we living in some ulterior dimension? You know, we're not, but we are oftentimes is living other people's projections. Mm -hmm. And in, for me and you, it was like, wow, we were sort of achiever, achiever, achievers, and then criticism. And then I started to sort of look at myself as if maybe I've been fooling myself the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. Maybe I am that horrible person they right, say Right, maybe I am. I am. And maybe part of those. Maybe may, some of it was true. Maybe some of it was yeah, true for and me, I, that's too. Some of it, I was like, oh, I can see where I was kind of an asshole at that moment right? in time. You know, like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't take other people's feelings into consideration when I did blank, whatever it may have been. Mm. I can look back now and go, oh, yeah, like I, there were parts of that that were true, but that's not totally that's not who i am me too yeah my way out i'm curious what some of your ways are let's talk about some tools out for you yes. what works for you ice baths no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> we were just for everybody we were just talking about how yeah, we much were, we can't stand we were, we were ice, ice baths before the show uh, <laughs> yeah it's definitely not ice baths uh, for the two of us right funny. now um that's so dang funny <laughs> it's so true i i uh for me the hardest thing i'll tell you something interesting because I've been in front of people. I conflated two things too. I conflated like um, love with significance. Mm -hmm. When I did significant things, I felt loved. Mm -hmm. So if I would just keep doing significant things, and sometimes in life, these things also work for you. Like one of the reasons oh, yeah. you were so successful yes. is because you did make this. And then you're, oftentimes in life, if something works for you a little bit, it's really scary to give it up entirely. Because mm -hmm. you're like, that's part of my recipe. If I don't have anxiety or worry, maybe right. I won't practices or it yeah. won't be on my a game and so there's a nuance to life mm -hmm. that's the hard part about podcasting or writing a book it's like there's a nuance yeah. to something but for me the hardest thing that is now the most beautiful thing is what you just said earlier me being alone with me mm -hmm. i realized like maybe it's different for a woman but maybe it's not but like for me like i never even just stopped and really just like looked at me in a mirror mm -hmm. like just not i'd look at like is my hair messed up or something right. but i mean just like I love this man. Mm -hmm. I've like, I've never done, I had never done that. Like, I, I love this man. This is a good man. I've never would stop. I was just doing life. Mm -hmm. And then this idea of like getting alone with myself and being quiet and like just being with my breathing and these were so difficult for me. And when they were difficult for me, I thought, well, maybe that's because it would be so valuable for me if mm -hmm. I could do it. And so for me, forms of meditation have helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes like actually writing for me can be a form of meditation. Oh, yeah, so has it, what's worked for you? Like if you were to share with someone who says, I got anxiety, yeah. I got worry, I got fear, <laughs> I got anger. What has actually worked most of the time? Yeah. I mean, I think that piece of creativity is super important. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we're all creative beings. Like yes. that is our nature. Yep. And I think until we nurture that nature, mm -hmm. um, and find a way of doing that. Like, and I think what's so interesting too, is we are all so unique. 
Like what works for one person will not work for the next person possibly. And, you know, it, it's just you have to find your own path with it. So I, I dip in and out of things all the time. Meditation is pretty much a non-negotiable for me, mm-hmm. even if it's five minutes me too. during the day. I just need to sit, breathe, um, and, you know, I'll take in an inhale and like and do it like double time, uh, double longer exhale. Mm-hmm. That usually will help my anxiety a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've really gotten into recently um, working a lot with my physical body, like balancing my hormones. Like I've, I kind of mm-hmm. went from at the beginning meditation and breathing to now like going running the gamut of pretty much everything you can think of. Me too. But, you know, physical, mental, spiritual, like emotional, it's all important you can't leave one out Mm. you really can't um writing i think you know has been such a a big thing for me also Mm. creating um and i yeah it's interesting that you just said because something clicked Mm. for me is you said um that you know we get projected upon like the things we're good Mm. at things we're not good at i think leaning into the things i've been told i wasn't good at like i i i don't like to dance like it really I do not like to move my body. And there was, I think that also has to do with um, old uh, religious programming too. Mm. Um, But it's, I had this whole thing around, someone told me one time that I was a better singer than I was a dancer and I stopped dancing. And which, by the way, like I I might have been a fine dancer, but if you're going to tell me a better singer, I mean, I'm like, I'm, (laughs) I was exceptionally good at singing. So I like, I (laughs) couldn't dance that well too. Um, But yeah, I felt like I just stopped doing it. And so for me, finding what those places are that feel really uncomfortable. And even if it's for me putting one song on, and like moving my body mm-hmm. freely is in when I do that, I'll ball like I'll ball and I'll have so much joy at the same time. Mm. And then I, I'll stop. I'm like, OK, if that's that's kind of my threshold of how I but how I lean into those things. But I, I feel like it's finding those places for people w- that are scary mm-hmm. and walking into them. And they don't have you don't have to just, you know, run and jump off the cliff like. Yep just dipping a toe into things to expand who we believe ourselves to be yeah like it just it opens our lives up in every other aspect not just that one little space but in every other aspect of our life starts to change you're so right that's where i want to go too you're like doing the interview for me (laughs) but like i tied up my identity into everything outside of me Mm -hmm. all of my life so like uh if i made money or i got a muscle or Mm -hmm. whatever it was it was my identity was always tied to the external Mm -hmm. man it worked for me for a long time yeah it does it works it works (laughs) but it like when i got wealthy or whatever like i it never was quite what i thought it would be when i would get there Mm -hmm. and i think it was because i had i had tied it to the external instead of like like i I just love this work. I love doing this work. So you had to have had your identity completely tied up in being famous or being oh, yeah. a singer. And did you, have you unpacked that at all? Like someone oh, yeah. listen to this, your identity <laughs> could be that, and stay with me, your identity could be that you're a mother. Yeah, well, absolutely. someday, by the way, someday you'll be an empty nester. And yeah. then what, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it could be anything out there, but did you, you must have had a lot of that. It's still think. tied up um, and to a certain extent around my voice. I, I went through this, few days the other day where I was thinking like what could I live without and when I really yeah Mm -hmm. like could I live without my voice Mm -hmm. and that was one big one where I was like Mm -hmm. I don't want to Mm -hmm. but if I had to I guess I would have to and I I just looked up at the sky I was like don't do that to me (laughs) so you know this is not an invitation let's not prove it to test that theory (laughs) right but I you know, I, there was like my wedding, it was interesting things like my wedding ring, like was really, is really important to me. Hmm. And yeah, it's random little things that I was like, it's a powerful question. "Hmm." Yeah. It was, and it was like, okay, well maybe that's because of how important like relationships, I was told how important relationships were at a certain age, Hmm. you know, like, well, how are these things, how are, why, why are the the few things that I wouldn't really want to let go of? Why are they so important? So I went through that for a moment and my my voice is definitely one of those weird things when you're born into this world with something like that Mm -hmm. and you know as you get older like things shift and change and i know that i'm not gonna be doing this my whole life you know i mean who knows but i mean i i at some point i i feel like i 
want a different experience. That's been the new thing for me too, is that, that whole term different experience. Um, especially when shifting things, it's like, Oh, I want a different experience. What's a different experience look like? Mm -hmm. So it's been something I've been playing with. And I know for me, like I will want a different experience one day than being on the road. Yeah. So, and I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had moments like, look, COVID, you know, gave us an opportunity Mm -hmm. to kind of uh, untangle from yep. all of those things that we were attached to and I did for a moment and I was I was okay with it mm-hmm. I was okay with it I think look I you know I just released an album I um I haven't ever I, I don't even look at charts anymore like I don't know what what it did I I really don't and I maybe really? it's part of that self-preservation and also part of it though is is not the reason I do it anymore right. like the reason I do it is to connect with people mm. and help shift help them shift or help them question and it's really yeah it's it's so interesting how my reason for doing things has shifted changed it really has what would someone listen to this and they just said hey i'm i'm curious to your i saw you on a stage i don't remember whose event it was it was lewis's oh yeah it was lewis's. i swear i met you yeah yeah and um i had to go up after you i think you did i think i had to go up after you I was like, I'm not, I I rarely have ever had that feeling in my life. I don't want to go up after that because the room was so moved. Mm. I just thought she's going to be doing this too. Thanks. Like what meaning this, meaning like leveraging this gift she has, but and it was much more like direct approach. It wasn't like just enjoy my work. There was a message, mm-hmm. spoken message, some chanting with it. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. I, I, I'm surprised you haven't gone further down that road. It's something I want to do. Yeah, well, maybe um, today's the beginning, yeah, right? Yeah, no, right? right. It is. When I, it's funny when you when you asked me to come on here, that's mm-hmm. what I thought about. And mm-hmm. I remember you saying to me, you came up after and you were like, you've never done this before? Because right. I had such a, I was going through this whole thing with, mm-hmm. with Lewis. I'm like, I don't speak. I speak during my shows, but like, mm-hmm. this is, you're asking me to give a speech. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, just come do it for like 10 minutes and then you can yeah. sing and then we'll have a chat. I'm like, cool, I mm-hmm. can do that. But it, it did give me this bug of this is another way for me to share yes. and connect with people. And when you asked me to do this, it made me think of that. I'm Good. like, you know what? I need to do that. I've been speaking for 30 years. One time ever, I, went, I would really prefer not to go up right now after that person, and it was you. <laughs> I'm serious. And it's not because you can sing better than me. I think that's kind of a given. I was like, no, something just happened in the room right now that I'm not so sure I can match or do anything better then and i i'm dead serious when i say that to you and it's the heart it's it's the heart i mean i think that i was so open i mean i walked up on stage and just started bawling because it was i was conquering and that's what i talked about i was i cry now i was conquering a huge fear yeah and i know that that's also the reason why i haven't done more of it but i the reason as i'm crying the reason i know i need to (laughs) which is rather remarkable that you of all people were uncomfortable getting up in front of a group but the lesson (laughs) in it the reason i bring it up is the lesson i made a post saturday about this like start a new hobby you said a new experience Mm -hmm. that's the pathway to bliss everybody that's the pathway is to do something new that you feel ill prepared for that's yeah. a bit scary but maybe you have some potential proclivity for yeah. it. like i shouldn't decide that right now i'm going to start doing 360 windmill dunks <laughs> it's just not a lot of dudes that uh, are my build that are doing yes. that right now so it's got to be something that you have some proclivity for but mm-hmm. create a new experience like even if you're great at something to your point like you're you're the best at what you do but do you want that to be the entire experience of your life yeah right like that's the juice of life. And so why I was so proud of you, not even knowing you that day, and then to watch you just go, wow. But I remember thinking, this is probably something she's going to do a lot of. And then really, you haven't very much since that no, time. No, I haven't since so, then. Well, but also COVID happened along yeah, those lines that's too. True. So, but it is something that I've, I, I just had this huge meeting the other day with my team. And I'm like, that is, that is on the docket of things. Good. Like, to to walk into I'm, i did well it. you just got introduced to a couple million more people who yeah. want you to do it so it's <laughs> really you. good i did um i did a chant record during yes. um during the middle of covid because i felt like people just people needed it um yeah. which was something new for me i've mm-hmm. never kind of branched out and did that and then i think that kind of you know that informed this new record and i'm also working i'm working on a chant too at the moment so i'm wanting really? to create this whole like sound experience for people you guys when um, she does this it's unreal it's yeah. unreal she did it that day it's, it's unreal so it's unreal you you know you said sometimes you're slipping a little bit like you go like i didn't have a good morning today or whatever 
I heard you say this a while ago. I'm going to bring up something you said that might help you today and Thanks. help everybody else. I would else. love that. And it's something that I do. So, like, you said something about all you've accomplished in your life. It's like looking back and going, man, I've, you know, I've had a pretty, I've accomplished some things. Everybody listening to this has overcome so many things in their life they don't give themselves credit for. Yeah. But one of the things that's helped me, like, I wrote my book. The last book I wrote is really a lot about my childhood and my dad and drinking. My dad got sober, and it's a great story. But there's a lot of power for me, even when I'm having bad days as a grown 51-year-old man. Usually, everyone, I want you to hear this. Now we're going deep, deep. But this is for Leanne, too. Usually the 51-year-old man is not having the experience that's mm-hmm. so bad. It's me as a little boy mm-hmm. who, like, the 51-year-old dude is, like, living it out again. Even if he hasn't had, like, I'll go for three months. I'm doing great. I haven't had a lot of anxiety. I haven't had a lot of worry. I've had some. And then, like, bam, it comes back again. Mm-hmm. Or bam, imposter syndrome. Or bam, I'm insecure. Or one of my new things the last five or eight years has been, like, is it worth it? Like, I do this thing with me. Is it worth it? You know? Mm-hmm. It's just this weird game you play with yourself. And for me, one of the pathways out is I go back to the, this sounds corny, I know some of my dudes listening to this, but I go back to me, the little boy, and I have a little conversation. I don't have the conversation with just the 51-year-old me who's going through it. I go back to the little boy. I just give him a hug and say, hey, man, everything's going to be okay. You're going to have a great life. You're going to be amazing. You're loved. You're special. You're powerful. You're giving. And somehow, there's a lot of power that happens to me when I go back to him. Number one, I kind of heal that little dude, Mm -hmm. but it also automatically sort of gives me a perspective that I'm no longer that little boy. I'm 51. I've had a pretty good life in between. Mm -hmm. You said something. You said, I got to learn or I'm learning how to love myself as a little girl. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, have you done that? And does that that help you when you do it? You did it this morning. (laughs) I did. I just put my hand on my heart because I know what's activated. Like you're Mm -hmm. saying, I know when this is happening, this is not Leanne, the 40 year old woman. Yeah. And I just put my hand on my heart. I'm like, it's okay. Like, Mm -hmm. it's okay. And sometimes just that moment of breaking the pattern, the the mind pattern of ruminating or whatever it may be, just a moment of compassion Mm -hmm. is so helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I was saying, you know, there's this like, piece of me that I've kind of learned how to move aside that when that little girl is super activated Mm. it's like that's the piece that I'm now I'm not getting rid of her I'm not like pushing her down I'm just Mm. saying you can step over here and I've got this yeah we'll come back to you we'll come back and you're but you're all and you're always there like you know there's not I think for so long there was such a disassociative piece for me of having to like I said come out of that free state yeah and work and so I had to disassociate and Mm. so I'm now not disassociating, but mm. bringing all of me into the room. Mm. And that means bringing my anxiety and my fear and all of those things right along with me. Really, really <laughs> good, Leanne. Yeah. That's really, really good. This is why I do the show. I only do one a week, and I do it because I think, like, someone's life's going to change. And today, like, lots of lives are changing because we're just human. With The symptoms of how we live out parts of these wounds we have is different, but the disease is the same for all of us. The disease is very similar. I'm curious. I've always wanted to ask somebody who's extraordinary. I mean, I know what it's like. I think like my, I don't know what my gift is. I think it's probably when I'm on stage speaking, Mm -hmm. I can feel there's just something there. Could you share with me and everyone? What does it feel like when you're in your genius? Like what is going on in you? Do you know when you're singing and it's a crowd and you're just, you're just in that. I, I, I want to take you there for a minute. Yeah. You're in this, like you're doing potentially one of the things certainly you were born to do, mm-hmm. right? You're in your calling. You're in one of your purposes. I say one of because you are more than that, but let's be real. Something, there's, there's a spiritual energy, a God experience happening. What's happening in you? Because like it might be for an auto mechanic. It's like when they're really fixing that engine, right? It's they're in their calling. They're in right. their thing. So it could be any, the, the, our geniuses are different, but we all have a genius. Mm-hmm. Do you know, can you consciously go there for a minute? I don't know if you ever thought about it. What's happening it in you? Which, you know, what's really interesting is I can be in that and still be um, completely judgmental of myself. As you're doing it? Mm-hmm. Come on now. What do you mean? I can, I can, there, I can totally be in doing whatever I'm doing and still have like all the fear and the anxiety and judgment. And then there is a, and no one would know. Like Mm -hmm. there's no, there's no real, which is what's so trippy. Like there's no real, there's no difference in me 
it, there's a difference in me inside, but there's no difference yeah. to other people out there. Wow. I just can, it's like a switch that you flip and it's like whatever, nothing that's working through me is going, nothing I'm doing humanly is going to get in the way of it. But there are times when I can just move over, like I said, that's kind of move over this piece of me that wants to judge and do all the things. Um, I can move it over to the side and really connect with that and allow it to envelop me. Mm. And when that happens, I feel like there's just a whole, it's like, it's a drug. Yeah. It's a high. If, you know, it's, um, it's the one place where, you know, I can go and, and get lost. Like if I can get past all the, Mm -hmm. stuff going on in my head i get lost and found all at the same time yeah. <laughs> you know it's um that's beautiful yeah it is it's and i think that's what's been so challenging for me to have had that experience from so such a young age yeah. life outside of that has felt that. really boring mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's been mm -hmm. and it's so anxiety inducing because all i really want to do it's like i said it's a drug I, all i really want to do is get back to that connection mm -hmm. with that thing that works through me. I would imagine the thing that's most resembling it is love you have for Eddie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think any kind of love. Love. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it, I feel like that's what it is. Yeah, I do too. Um, that's what speaks through. It's, and that's that, that open heartedness, like that. Um, yeah, I feel like there's such, and I feel like that's been such a challenge for me in this world too, is my heart's just always been like this mm -hmm. big thing walking around, like fully mm -hmm. open. I and think there's a gift you're giving. I think, by the way, I go to the mechanic because uh, I think it's such a great contrast, but mm -hmm. it's not. You're doing it like you're giving your gift to humanity when you're doing it, mm -hmm. whatever that is. If you're great at gardening, you're yeah. giving your gift to humanity. Mothering, anybody right? who mothers. Like, I mean, Mothering, right. You know, it's, Fathering. Yeah, all right? the things. Right. It's, you know, some, something as I say simple, it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't yeah. have to be on stage for this to be happening. Correct. You just have to be present. I think Ooh, for me, full presence. Yeah, I think for me, it's presence, and that's when if I can. You're so good at this. You should yeah. Be this. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's presence. It's yeah. um, you know, when I can fully hand myself over, it's presence and surrender, and we only have presence right when we surrender to what is in this moment. So it's, and I think that's why I've learned to walk on stage, with that, with the fear, with the anxiety you know, and not judge it and let that be part of my experience. It's like what I did with at Lewis's event. It's mm -hmm. like I walked on stage and said, I'm fearful. If you want to know what being scared shitless and doing it anyway looks like, that's me. You literally said that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And it and I, I've learned if the the greatest piece of who we are is our vulnerability when it mm -hmm. comes to being able to stand on stage like that and mm -hmm. share. You know, for a parent it's like, you know, when you yell at your kid and then you can go back and be like, I'm sorry. I, that, you know, I, I, I was angry at that moment in time when you can go back and be vulnerable with your kid. It's the vulnerability mm. is what is the genius. It's mm. the open heartedness that happens there. It's mm. when you can bring all of you, all of you to the moment and be present with what is instead of trying to like put on this mask, you know, to face the world. Mm. And yeah, you know what? It's interesting because it, it, it sometimes it hurts more like sometimes mm. that is even more painful to be on stage in, in that but it also what can come back at you yes um and what can come through you it, it what i've learned recently is it's harder to withhold mm -hmm. it's harder it's more painful to withhold love than the vulnerability the pain of the vulnerability of of giving it all oh wow because ultimately i had a show the other night where um, the crowd was really quiet. And of course I take that and I'm like, I'm doing, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm not doing a great job. And all of a sudden I was like, no, I'm gonna perform for me. And mm. I, and I did, I, and it took, look, it took me, I had to be aware enough to <laughs> get yeah. to that place where I can go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna perform the best for me because I love me and I wanna have this experience. And so it wasn't about anybody else in that yeah. moment. And now what I've learned, it's like, okay, how can I create the experience I want for myself? And I invite people in Yes. because it's oh, not about part. trying to get their love. Mm -hmm. It's about trying to be all of me for me. That's, that's your, that's your thing. Right yeah. There. That's your moment. Of that's change. it. Yes. For me, so there you took me to it. Finally. No, you found <laughs> it. No, the full presence thing. I need to process that actually when we're done. 
because you're 100 percent right and when i'm in them whatever my geniuses are especially like when i'm speaking or with them with my children time changes too mm. like i'm fully present i lose track of time i'm fully vulnerable i'm fully open when i speak that happens on stage a funny thing that you say someone called me last week like did you speak at so-and-so event because i spoke the day after you they're like the crowd was terrible <laughs> and i had that same thing i'm up there i'm like what am i it's, yeah. i think i'm doing what i do you know and yeah. it's just they're so quiet and i couldn't see the crowd and i went into that oh gosh i better ramp oh, what am i doing mm-hmm. like this, oh i'm lo-. and i'm at, i'm you wouldn't know just like you said when you're singing i'm having this horrific conversation yep. with myself as i'm just blowing and going and then so I really had this really kind of stressful experience up there and I'm doubling down. And then at the end, they put the lights on. Everyone was crying. Oh it God. wasn't that they weren't with me. They yeah. were being emotional with what I had said. So sometimes our own insecurities can come in and interrupt our presence. Yeah, absolutely. When You said there's a high. Mm-hmm. Is there a low after? Mm-hmm. Mm, I relate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a low after? Wait, there's a what's, real low after. What's it like? Um, when, when? Soon? Like you're in the car on the drive back? Yeah. Um, it yeah. happens probably within 45 minutes of coming off stage. Okay. Um, I feel like I get hit by a truck. Mm-hmm. Um, and it lasts for, yeah, until I go back on stage. I mean, if we're doing three shows in a row, like yeah. it'll, I can kind of keep it you know a bit of the high going because mm-hmm. i'm still having to keep myself you know mm-hmm. kind of in that mode of go go mode mm-hmm. um but then when i come home it's like i at least have to have a day where i'm like decompressing mm-hmm. and i'll go i can go into like a bit of a depressed state because yep. it's yeah and then it's a dopamine hit yep and i've been having dopamine hits my whole life yep. and i'll look for them like i'll i'll definitely like i've find myself looking for dopamine hits all the time and i'm i recognize it once again awareness yeah. um but it's just the way my body has been built and i've had to i've had to really learn how to to work with that because yep. yeah my, f- i mean i started that my, my system got produced like turned into that so so young so young yeah yeah i knew you were going to say that and i knew you were going to say decompress and i mm-hmm. knew that it was soon because for me like when i speak it's um in the car on the way to leave I already feel it. And I think it's just the vibrational frequencies change. The energies Mm -hmm. change so much. The dopamine's leaving my body. Mm -hmm. But a functioning person, I think, has the ability to, we both know it's a chemical issue in our brains, but -hmm. but there should be other things when I leave there that would produce it. Like being able to call my wife ought to produce that same thing if I'd be just as present with her as I was with these 17,000 people I was just speaking in front of or whatever it is, right? So, and here's what it's come down to for me. So I'm going to go to the, I'm leading to a place. Yeah. Maybe my favorite conversation we've had on the show, by the way. That's no disrespect to anybody else, but maybe my favorite. (laughs) Um, Because everyone just got to listen in to me and Leanne talk about our stuff, which hopefully helps you. It's therapy. Which which helps you. (laughs) But um, I have uncovered something maybe the last year or two about me. I'm good at loving people, man. Mm. I love people. I think one of the reasons I'm pretty good in front of a group or the show or with friends is I'm, I love people. And I think they feel it when I'm, and I think people feel it from you too. Mm-hmm. I am still not good at getting love from other people. Oh, okay. I understand that. And I, and, and, and I, sh- I have people that really love me, mm-hmm. but it's almost like I'm, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I really almost never sit there and go, I'm loved. Like, I, I can't believe I'm saying this on the show right now. <laughs> I can't because I have f- fans and friends yeah. and children and family and spouse. and. But I, r- r- I just don't allow it in. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. Actually, I can appreciate that they love Absolutely. me and not feel it, if that makes any mm-hmm. sense. And I would like to figure that out. I think that's the thing. If you figure that out, let me know. Because <laughs> I'm working on it too. Like I really have to focus on people will give me a compliment mm-hmm. and I I will sit there and really work to take it in. Me too. Because it's so challenging. It's like it doesn't penetrate. That's it. Yeah. It um, doesn't penetrate. Yeah. And it's and I I'm with you. I have people around me who love me mm-hmm. so very much. And mm-hmm. it's and it's so interesting because I felt I think with me, when I, when I talking Mm -hmm. with you, when I'm on stage with people, Mm -hmm. I want people to feel less alone Mm -hmm. because I know that's been one of my core pieces Mm -hmm. is like, I've felt so lonely in this world Mm -hmm. and I want people to feel less alone. And so that's why I share so openly, Mm -hmm. like, you know, we're so, so similar in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, and someone in our position can share about these things, mm -hmm. it really does. Like it gives people hope and it makes them feel less lonely. And so I think that's for me, the loving piece is like, it's almost like, I think my nurturance comes out in that way with other people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to learn how to do it for myself. And then the next part is letting the love of others in. Cause I know it's there. It's, it's the, so obvious. It's the, it's the thing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the thing. And for me, it's like, um, even talking about it with you and several other people that are listening um, helps me because it's like it's it becomes more apparent to me that I am. Mm -hmm. It becomes more apparent to me that I should. It's almost like I've just spent too much of my life. I think everybody might relate to this. Just I'll get around to that. Like, let me figure all these other things out. And then I'm sure there'll be this time I'll just sit on a beach somewhere and it's just going to happen. Yeah. But that's not really how it, the reason therapy works so well is like, I think you're hearing yourself talk more than anything mm -hmm. oftentimes. Totally. So, that's why writing is so great too. It's yes. like you're really working it out for yourself. What would you say to someone who says, I kind of share this with you. If you, I'll make you work at this right now. Someone says, I would like to feel a little bit more loved myself. Mm -hmm. So don't advise you because you probably wouldn't do it yeah. for you. What would you say to them? And I'm seeing you, you're looking up, which means you're really thinking. Yes, I am really yeah. thinking. So what would your um, answer be? That they want to feel more loved. Yeah, to allow that to happen. Well, I always go back to how how deeply are you loving yourself? Because mm. I think ultimately it's this Good answer. Yeah. it's this belief that we're not worthy of it. Mm -hmm. Um. So the the more we can actually love from the inside out, mm. the more we'll believe that we're worthy of the outside in. Yeah. Um. Man. And so I think that's the new that then that's like I said, that's my my next piece or what I'm what I'm toying with and playing with in my life right yeah. now is that I'm I'm being kinder to myself. I'm loving myself more. I'm loving my own choices more like they don't have to be dictated by the outside world. Mm. Um, like I loved creating this record and I get so much out of it mm. because it's the connection I have with not only people, but myself. Mm. Like I'm doing things that I love. So mm -hmm. I think it's when we can come from that place, then we start to believe maybe eventually you know, you're right. <laughs> that we're worthy of it from the outside. You know, you're right. The reason that I struggle with it, and we only have a few more minutes, you guys, like this is one of these things just flew by, but I like don't do this to other people, I do it to me. I really stack my mistakes against myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like stuff people don't know that's a mistake. Do you ruminate on your mistakes? Yeah. yeah, those are fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I actually think having friends who share this with mm -hmm. you makes it easier. It because, does. <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I'm not completely alone on this. No. You said about feeling alone, like mm -hmm. I'm not alone in this. And, and I like, I just stack my mistakes. Like, hey man, like, like, I don't do that with my other friends, but like mm -hmm. with me, it's like, you did this, you did this, you didn't do that very well. You didn't right. do, and, and then the, the stuff that I do very well is like, well, of course you do. You're good at that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does anyone relate to what I'm saying right now? I'm like, well, yeah. of course you're, you're already good at that. That doesn't yeah. count. Exactly. You, it doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't like, count. Exactly. I could go on stage and do <laughs> right. an amazing show it and I'm like. It doesn't count. You're already well, good I, at that. Well, yeah. Just, that's what I do. Like, <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's really a form of crazy. But and if I beat my husband at tennis, then I that one like really counts. So. <laughs> Isn't that so uh, weird? We're so you know what you all have to accept at some point. Being human is just interesting. It is. I say that all the time. I'm yeah. like, this is such an interesting thing. It is, and it's. But you have to laugh about it at some point. Yes. You know, like all of the all the crazy habits we get ourselves into, and mm. the beliefs, and at some point we there has to be some humor in it. There has to be humor. And what we said earlier is it's not like a one moment. No. We're chipping away at ourselves. We're improving. We're evolving. We're growing. And I think you have to give yourself credit. I do these things I've described much less than I used to. Exactly. Much yes. less. <laughs> I just think I had this notion that at some point there was going to be this aha. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm never going to be down again. I think I felt that way too. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the... That's what we're fed, right? I yes. mean, that's in this world, it's kind of like the, you know, what the lie, the big lie. That is the big lie. Yeah. And the other big lie, by the way, is that you're further from it. So I say this in my book. The Bible says, where there's no vision, the people will perish. Well, you got to dig a little deeper on that. People have vision. Like if I said, do you want to be happy or sad? What's your vision for you? Like, I want to be happy. Would you like to have some money or be poor? Right. I'd probably like to have some money. Do you want to contribute and make a difference or not? I want to. So you have a vision. The lie. 
is that you're super far away from it. Yeah. That you think it's 25 years away. And so because that's the lie you've believed, you behave and have a pa- You don't, but most people mm-hmm. do. They have a pattern. Well, you do in one thing with being happy or not mm-hmm. being depressed. But you keep it so far away. And so you create these patterns in your life to perpetually keep your dreams and your vision that far away from you. And perhaps this is a breakthrough for me that I don't do it with like achievements. I just do it with emotions. Mm-hmm. I think I do with emotions. I think I'm just hearing myself say this right now, but like I haven't done it with money or success or a show or I've done it with like the emotion of bliss. I'm like, it's just far away. Yeah. And so I I keep it there. I get you. And you know what what I've been doing recently and I've, we always hear about gratitude list. Yes. And we always, I'm thinking, I always think for myself, like that's the simplest, dumbest thing to do. And I did it a long time ago and I remember it really helping. And so I started it about a week ago. And now I go through my whole day and I'm starting to notice like, I'm really, I'm really grateful for a conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm really, you know what? I'm really grateful for this ice water. Like I'll start to, Mm -hmm. it'll start to add up. Yep. And it's really helping me. So, so simple. Good for me though. (laughs) But you're saying that, that those, you know, the bliss that you're keeping so far away from you. It's like, oh no, there's little moments of joy all the time all the time even amidst the you know the anxiety and everything that i have going on Mm -hmm. and that's what i loved i really i was never going to get out of this this morning at all i was Mm going to come in here because i was like you know what i'm going to enjoy this conversation Mm -hmm. and i'm going to walk out of there feeling different it's like going to the gym sometimes it's like once i get there it's like oh this feels really good yeah so you know i think for me it's it's um but you helped several million people today and let me tell you something listen to me on this you're you're not good at this. You are this. Thank you. You, sh- you should be doing <laughs> more of this. Thank Just trust me. I do it. I know when I see it. Like, like I, I know. Thank really, you. I'm really kind of decent at it, too. And I know when I see somebody that is. This will be the most shared show I've ever done because we've hit on topics that really matter to people. Mm-hmm. And two people that maybe, well, in your case anyway, people really look up to Aww. are going to be like, wow, that was the most vulnerable conversation between two people I've probably ever damn heard. And they don't have every answer. No. But success leaves clues. There was a bunch of clues in there. Yeah. And one or two of these works for me. And keep asking questions. Curiosity yeah. is so important. Mm-hmm. Curiosity is so important. And mm-hmm. I, I remember I used to be such a curious child. And I... Once again, that innocence piece, it's like our curiosity. That's imagination. It goes, yes, yes. it just kind of like drifts. Yep. And we have to come back to that. Like you start think, asking questions. I think we're on to it. I'm telling you guys, you've got to start to just give yourself the gift of imagining and dreaming and curiosity. And yes. when a history and memory keeps popping, listen, there's going to be a story for your life. If you keep telling the same story over and over again, you're going to keep repeating the same chapters. If you just start to imagine are curious yep. about the next chapters. You try some different things. You walk on stage at an event. You go, I'm terrified, but I'm going to do this. Yes. I'm going to try this new hobby. I'm going to start the, you know, I'm going to get good at CrossFit. I'm going to do whatever it is. I'm going to start writing. I'm going to journal. You're going to find gifts within you that were always there. Mm-hmm. You don't have to chase them. They're there, but they'll be revealed to you when you go into these spaces that Leanne's described today. Okay, one last thing. Yes. Speaking of spaces, make sure you go, guys, get God's work. But also, you're going on a Christmas tour. If we don't promote that, we've made a big mistake. Yes. So it's December 2nd through the 18th. Yep. Where are you going? Like New York, we Iowa? Are going, yeah, East Coast. We'll come back to the West Coast in Oregon. Okay. We're going to be in Iowa. Um, I don't remember. Oh, we're going to be in Nashville at the Ryman. Ooh, cool. um, so, yeah, a bunch of different places. But I always do a holiday tour, mm. and I, I have a plethora of holiday songs. you got a some plethora. big words in there, too. It is. See? I've got quite the catalog of holiday music. Where do they go figure it out? Where do they go find it? Um, LeanneRhymes.com. They can just go find everything on there. Check it I out. love you. I think you're awesome. Thank you. I had so enjoyed this. This was a blast. Me too. I knew and it I would be. And I feel so much better now. Good. I do too. <laughs> well, a lot of people do. One last question. Someone runs into Leanne Rhymes at Starbucks. Uh-huh. You never know, guys. That could happen. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Hypothetically. And they say, hey, I have a dream just like you had, Mm -hmm. and I would like to make my dream come true. I want to sing, I want to paint, I want to start a business, I want a family, I want to be a millionaire, I want to start a shelter for um, homeless people, whatever it might be. I just would wonder what your advice would be. If you give me one little piece of advice from someone who's, it, you would. It's funny listening to the two of us talk today. You think neither one of us ever made any of our dreams come true. We've made lots of them come true. It's something you've been incredible at doing. What advice would you give to that person who would ask that question to you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I for me, mm-hmm. like when I think about all that I've created, it's 
you're right. The vision is there. It's mm -hmm. this desire. Mm -hmm. Whatever is such a deep desire that you are motivated every mm -hmm. day to get up and do that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and start start asking. Start getting curious. Ask. For me, it's like I, when I think of how I create, I create with, with energy. I create with the universe. And mm -hmm. so it's like just start asking. Mm -hmm. Show me. Mm -hmm. And for me, and then that's when you start. That's when life starts getting really interesting because yeah. you'll start to meet people. Or things will start falling into your lap, and that's when you—that's when you have to just take. You have to go down the path. Like yes. it will open up to you. Now you have to walk through the door. Yeah. And I think that's where our, you know, us believing we're worthy, us taking our, you know, our vulnerabilities and our humanity and doing it anyway. Yeah. Um, that's where all that has to come into play. Mm. Um, because it's interesting how many opportunities we'll miss when we think I should, you know, I'm not worthy of that it's or I can't show up, you know, just as I am today. Yeah. So I think when you just start asking the questions, the things will show up in your life. It's proven in your brain, everybody. I talk about it in the book. It's your matrix. It's the RES. That's why when she said earlier that she's oh, yeah. finds things she's yeah, grateful yeah. for. Now those things, are, they were always in your awareness. Yes. They were in your visual field, your auditory field, your sensory field. You d When you ask and when you're intentional about something, it heightens your sensory acuity, your height, your vision your auditory and your kinesthetic begins to touch, feel, hear, see things that were always there that you were oblivious to because they weren't part of your matrix and your intention yep. before. She is a million percent right about it. Like, what a freaking killer conversation Thank today. You. It was Thanks so for good. Me. Was it not unreal? Yay. So yeah. good. Share this with everybody. Fastest growing show on the planet. Number one, why? Awesome. Because it's awesome. That's why. <laughs> 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 it's awesome. So, hey, guys, share it with anybody that you love and you care about. And, um, man, I'm grateful for this Thank experience. you. Me too. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you came in anyway today. Yes. It's really good. All right, everybody. God bless you. Max out. Bye.